Please be seated. The mechanism for international criminal tribunals, Arusha branch, is now in session. Good morning, everybody. Registrar, could you please call the case? Good morning, Your Honor. This is case number MICT 1229A in the matter of Agustin Ingira Batuare versus the prosecutor sitting in open session today, Thursday, 18 December 2014, for the delivery of the judgment. Thank you. Mr. Nigrabatuare, can you follow the proceedings in a language you understand? Yes, Mr. President, I am following you very well. Thank you. Appearances of the parties. Counsel for Mr. Nigrabatuare, please. Good morning, Mr. President. Uh, Milan Dimitri, lead counsel for Mr. Nigrabatuare, accompanied this morning by Dr. Mitro, our co counsel and Dr. Sibuheze, our legal assistant. Thank you. For the prosecution. Good morning, Mr. President. Uh, to receive judgment, the prosecutor is represented by myself, and I'm appearing with Taka Senze, Bisengim Geo, Leon Oye, Nigel Davidson, Betim Babazi, and uh, Chelsea Fuchs. Most obliged. Thank you. <coughs> In accordance with the scheduling order issued on 3 December 2014 and pursuant to Rule 144D of the Mechanism's Rules of Procedure and Evidence, I will pronounce today the judgment on behalf of the Appeals Chamber in the case of Augustin Nigrabatoire against the prosecutor. I will not read out the full text of the judgment <coughs> except for the disposition but instead, I will summarize the essential issues on appeal <clears throat> and the central findings of the appeals chamber. This oral summary does not constitute any part of the official and authoritative judgment of the appeals chamber, which will be distributed in writing to the parties at the close of this hearing. During the relevant period in 1994, Nigrabatuare served as Minister of Planning in the Rwandan government. On 20 December 2012, Trial Chamber 2 of the International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda convicted Nigrabatuare of direct and public incitement to commit genocide based on his speech at the roadblock in the Amuyumba commune on 22 February 1994. It also found him guilty of instigating and aiding and abetting genocide based on his role in distributing weapons and his statements at two roadblocks road blocks in the Amumbak commune on 7 April 1994. The trial chamber also convicted Nigrabatuare under the extended form of joint criminal enterprise of rape as a crime against humanity. It sentenced him to 35 years of imprisonment. The trial judgment was issued in writing on 21 February 2013, and Neri Batware filed an appeal before the mechanism challenging his convictions and sentence. The Appeals Chamber heard the oral submissions of the parties on 30 June 2014. I will now turn to Nigrabatuare's grounds of appeal. A. Rule 98 Peace Motion. Nigrabatuare submits that the Trial Chamber erred in dismissing his motion under Rule 98 Bs of the ICTR rules requesting a judgment of acquittal in relation to 45 paragraphs of the indictment. 
the appeal chamber finds that the trial chamber did not err in dismissing Negrabatuare's Rule 98B's motion in its entirety. The appeal chamber therefore dismisses Negrabatuare's sixth ground of appeal. B, direct and public incitement to commit genocide. The trial chamber convicted Negrabatuare for direct and public incitement to commit genocide based on his speech at the roadblock on the Sianika Gisa Road in the Amyumba Commune on 22 February 1994. Specifically, the trial chamber found that following the murder, murder of Martin Bukayana, the chairman of the CDR political party, Nigrabatuare told the crowd of as many as 150 to 250 people assembled at the roadblock to kill Tutsis. Nigrabatuare challenges the trial chamber's findings in relation to his conviction for direct and public incitement to commit genocide. In relation to Nigrabatuare's arguments that he lacked notice of the charge, the appeals chamber finds that the indictment provided Nigrabatuare with sufficient notice as, is, as to his criminal conduct, the date of the commission of the crime, and the presence of a crowd at the roadblock. In particular, in relation to the location of the roadblock where the crime was allegedly committed, the appeals chamber finds that the inconsistencies in the evidence as to the roadblock's precise location were minor and do not, as such, show that Negrabatuare lacked sufficient notice of the location where the crime was allegedly committed or that he suffered any prejudice as a result. The appeal chamber also finds that Negrabatuare has failed to show that he had insufficient time to prepare for witness ANAT's ANAT's cross-examination. With respect to Negrabatuare's challenges as to the legal elements of the crime, the appeal chamber finds that Negrabatuare has failed to demonstrate that the trial mm -hmm. chamber erred in finding that the actus reus of the crime of direct and public incitement to commit genocide had been fulfilled. In relation to the public element of the crime, the trial chamber explicitly considered that the intended, an intended audience of Negrabatuare's speech was a group that may have been composed of as many as 150 to 250 people who had gathered at the roadblock as opposed to only those manning it. Nigrabatuare also has failed to demonstrate that the trial chamber did not make the necessary findings in relation to his mens rea for direct and public incitement to commit genocide. As regards Nigrabatuare's challenges to the trial chamber's assessment of the evidence, the appeal chamber concludes that Nigrabatuare has failed to show that the trial chamber erred in finding that there was no collusion or tainting between witness ANAN and ANAT. The appeals chamber therefore dismisses Nigrabatuare's fifth ground of appeal. C, genocide. The trial chamber convicted Nigrabatuare for instigating and aiding and abetting genocide based on his role in distributing weapons and his statements at two roadblocks in the Amyumbia commune on 7 April 1994. Specifically, the trial chamber found that on 7 April 1994, Negrabatuare delivered weapons to the Bruxelles roadblock where he told Fostem Bagango that he did not want any Tutsis alive in Bruxelles. The trial chamber also concluded that later the same day, Nigrabatuare returned to the Bruxelles roadblock and delivered more weapons. 
according to the trial judgment, Nigar Abatware reprimanded Zindar Rahmeh for only pretending to work and stated that he brought weapons because he did not want to see any Tutsis in the Busheke schedule. Following this incident, Nigar Abatware delivered weapons to the nearby, nearby Gitsimbi Kotagirwa roadblock, where he again told Bagongo that he did not want to see any Tutsis in the Amyumba commune and ordered Bagongo to work well. The trial chamber considered extensive evidence that people were attacked and killed after Nigarabatware delivered the weapons and that the Interachme, who manned the Brixel and Gitsimbi Kotagirwa roadblocks, were notorious for their role in killing Tutsis and looting their property. Nigarabatware submits that the trial chamber erred in convicting him of instigating and aiding and abetting genocide. The appeals chamber finds that Nigarabatware has failed to demonstrate that he lacked sufficient notice of the timing of the distribution of the weapons and that he suffered material <coughs> prejudice as a result of the defect in the pleading of the pleading of the location of the events in the indictment. The appeals chamber considers that Negrabatware has also failed to demonstrate that he lacked notice that he distributed weapons on three occasions at two separate locations and, he lacked no and that he lacked notice of the underlying crimes, the perpetrators or the victims. The appeals chamber also dismisses Nigarabatuare's arguments that the trial chamber erred in relation to the actus reus and mens rea elements of instigating and aiding and abetting. As regards the trial chamber's assessment of the evidence, the appeals chamber finds that a reasonable trial of fact could have found that the only reasonable inference from the evidence was that the Interachme used at least some of the weapons distributed by Negir on 7 April 1994 during the subsequent attacks and killings of Tutsis. The appeals chamber therefore dismisses Negir first ground of appeal. D. Alibi. At trial, Negir advanced an alibi placing him in Kigali from 6 to 12 April 1994. The trial chamber found that Negrabatware failed to give proper notice of his alibi and accordingly took this into account in evaluating the alibi evidence. In this regard, the trial chamber considered that the manner and context in which Nigirabatware provided notice of his alibi indicated that there was a high probability that the alibi was tailored and fabricated to fit the prosecution case. The trial chamber also noted the nature and proximity of the relationship between Nigirabatware and the defense witnesses and considered that these witnesses might have had a motive to protect Negrabatware. The trial chamber concluded that the alibi evidence was not credible and was insufficient to raise a reasonable doubt in the prosecution's case with regard to Negrabatware's presence in the Amumba commune on 7 April 1994. The appeal chamber finds that Nigarabatware has not demonstrated that the trial chamber erred in assessing the notice he provided for his alibi or in drawing negative inferences from it. The appeals chamber, Judge Moloto dissenting, also finds that Nigarabatware has not demonstrated that the trial chamber failed to assess the evidence as a whole, shifted the burden of proof, 
or erred in its evaluation of the feasibility of travel between Kigali and Gisine Prefecture. The appeals chamber, Judge Moloto dissenting, further finds that Negrabatoire has failed to demonstrate an error in the trial chamber's assessment of the alibi evidence. Accordingly, the appeals chamber, Judge Moloto dissenting, dismisses Negrabatoire's second ground of appeal. E, joint criminal enterprise. The trial chamber convicted Negrabatoire under count six of the indictment of, of rape as a crime against humanity pursuant to the extended form of joint criminal enterprise in relation to the repeated rape of Chantal Murazemaria in April 1994 by two members of the joint criminal enterprise. Nigrabatwari submits that the trial chamber erred in holding him responsible for the crime of rape on the basis of his participation in a joint criminal enterprise because his contribution to the joint criminal enterprise was not pleaded in the indictment. He further argues that he cannot be held responsible under count six of the indictment because the alleged common criminal purpose of the joint criminal enterprise under count six was the extermination of the Tutsi civilian population. And he was acquitted by the trial chamber of the crime of extermination charged under count five. The appeals chamber observes that the nature of the common purpose under count five extermination is identical to the common purpose pleaded under count six, rape. A plain reading of the indictment thus indicates that the common purpose of exterminating the Tutsi civilian populations, population pleaded under count six, rape, was linked to the charge of extermination contained in count five. The appeals chamber considers that count six rape is narrowly tailored and alleges Nigerabatwari's contribution to the common purpose to exterminate the Tutsis on the basis of his conduct pleaded under count five extermination. In relying on findings made in relation to count two genocide to establish Nigerabatwari's contribution to the joint criminal enterprise, the trial chamber impermissibly expanded the charge of rape as a crime against humanity. The appeals chamber observes that Nigrabatwari's contribution to the common purpose to exterminate the Tutsi civilian population was essential for establishing his responsibility for crimes committed beyond the common purpose, but which are nevertheless a natural and foreseeable consequence thereof. Since the prosecution failed to prove Nigrabatwari's contribution to the common purpose of exterminating the Tutsi civilian population pleaded under count five, Nigrabatwari's conviction for rape pursuant to the extended form of joint criminal enterprise under count six cannot be sustained. In the absence of an appeal by the prosecution, the appeals chamber will not comment on Negarabatwari's acquittal under count five of the indictment. The appeals chamber therefore grants, in part, Negarabatwari's third ground of appeal reverses his conviction for the rape of Chantal Murazer Maria and enters a verdict of acquittal under count six of the indictment. As a consequence, Nigrabatwari sports ground of appeal challenging other aspects related to his conviction
for the rape of Chantal Murase Maria is dismissed as moot. Sentencing. The appeal chamber finds that Nigarabatoir has not demonstrated any error in the trial chamber's assessment of his sentence. As previously mentioned, the appeal chamber has reversed Nigarabatoire's conviction for rape as a crime against humanity. Nonetheless, he remains convicted of very serious crimes, including direct and public incitement to commit genocide and genocide. The impact, if any, will be mentioned during the reading of the disposition. I would like now to ask Mr. Negarabatware to stand while I read the full text of the disposition of the appeal chamber in this case. For the following, foregoing reasons, the appeal chamber, pursuant to Article 23 of the statute and Rule 144 of the rules, Noting the written submissions of the parties and their oral arguments presented at the appeal hearing on 30 June 2014, sitting in open session, grants Nigarabatuare's third ground of appeal and reverses Nigarabatuare's conviction for rape as a crime against humanity pursuant to the extended form of joint criminal enterprise. Dismisses Judge Moloto dissenting in part Nigarabatuare's appeal in all other respects. Affirms Nigarabatuare's convictions for committing direct and public incitement to commit genocide. And Judge Moloto dissenting instigating and aiding and abetting genocide. Sets aside the sentence of 35 years of imprisonment and imposes a sentence of 30 years of imprisonment subject to credit being given under rules 125C and 131 of the rules for the period Negrabatoire has already spent in detention since his arrest on 17 September 2007, rules that this judgment shall be enforced immediately pursuant to Rule 145A of the rules. Orders that, in accordance with Rules 127C and 131 of the rules, Nigarabatoire is to remain in the custody of the mechanism pending the finalization of arrangements for his transfer to the state, where his sentence will be served. Judge Bacone, Justice Moloto, appends a dissenting opinion. Mr. Nigarapatuare, you may be seated. Registrar, would you please distribute copies of the written judgment to the parties? This concludes the appellate proceedings in this case. All rise.